Just obviously check it. See the whites of their eyes. Right, let's get started, shall we? Welcome everybody to the Coventry Music Museum. Great to see everybody here. Uh, this is, of course, lottery funded signing off event, as I must say every time. And welcome, Horace Panther! Yeah. What I normally say is, as well, have a think of a question. This is your chance to put a question to Horace. Nothing too hard. You know, what's the capital of Turkey or something like that? <laughs> right, okay, let's kick off. We're all right with the video. Istanbul. Actually, it's, <laughs> actually, it's Ankara. But, uh, everybody gets that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we won't go there. Peru. Uh, Lima. Right, okay. <laughs> We've got any flags? We should be listening to flags. Right, okay, first question. Why the bass guitar? Um, it's ever so easy. You don't do. I can't bar chord. You know that thing where you put your finger. I can't do that at all. Um, one note at a time, no chords. You know, it's just it's too easy. So, did you try the six string six string electric I, guitar? I had a, I had a, a, an acoustic guitar for my eighth birthday. Um, it looked great on me in front of the full length mirror in my yeah. but I couldn't play it at all. Yeah. But then, I, and I saw. Um, I, I redid really the searchers. I'm a child of the 60s. I, I was brought up listening to um, pirate radio stations and watching Thank You Lucky Stars. And I thought Tony Jackson, who was the bass player in the Spurt, just looked great with this big black sort of thing stuck under his chin and he stood in the middle. Mm. And I just thought, that, that'd be good. Yeah. So I, I sort of graduated. In, in pop groups in the 60s, the clever bloke played the lead guitar, his mate played the rhythm guitar, but the bloke who had the guitar but couldn't play it played bass <laughs> because you know I mean you know because he just stood there and went bum 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 you know and that's all you had to do so so you know um, but that kind of <laughs> so. well at least you know you didn't go around with the drums or anything like no, that no I, 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 I still can't play a, a six string guitar very well I still can't you, didn't you play some stuff with general public you did some rhythm guitar no no I, I played a bit of guitar and some when I was working with Rankin Roger but that was only because the guitar player showed me how to wear the exactly oh, well, my okay. fingers and it was only on one song. That's really weird. You'd think somebody that plays a bass very well for a living would be pretty cool. But you, get, you get people like, like Paul McCartney was originally one of the guitarists yeah, in, course, in, the, yeah. in the Beatles and he switched to to, to bass because, course, yeah. you know, because that, you know, because that Pete Sutcliffe, because Pete, Pete Sutcliffe played bass with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you have though, the people where, if you like, people go down, you know, well, okay then. I'll play bass because. Well, um, what's the bloke in in REM? What's the bass uh, player in REM? Come on. Uh, uh, not not Peter uh, Mills. Mike Mills. I mean, he he plays piano and guitar or whatever, but he decided to, to, to you know to, to play bass. So you have got people who sort of aspire to play to play bass. bass yeah, then you got rather. people who who are really good, but oh, all right, I'll play bass. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your early bands like Breaker. How did you get um, into that? I came to Coventry and to, went to the art college, uh, the Lanch, as it was, down the road, um, and was in the college band, which was great. Um, it's where I really I learned to play. I, I'd been in groups in Kettering where I was born, but we were, you know, it was never, they weren't, they weren't brilliant. Um, but I was in the college band from, um, with a guy called Bob Carter who died in 1988. He was in Lynx. Do you remember Lynx? They were on mm, Christmas, yeah. around about the time of the specials. Um, and he later co-wrote Mum Used to Say by Julia Giscom. <coughs> the a soul hit around about the 80s. He um, was the guy, we used to live in this house in Bramble Street, um, and he would basically teach me how to make, you know, oh yes, now what you're doing there is you're playing an octave, Horace. And I was like, what? Okay. And then, but he taught me about you know, where to put my fingers and, and all that sort mm. of stuff. So I suppose he was the, the person who sort of taught me how to play. So I left college um, being in the college band and it was the first time that I, you know, where people actually danced to things that I played. And um, <coughs> I was working with a, a drummer who, was, you know, who was, was, was really good. And then I joined Breaker, which was a show band. Um, you remember working men's clubs? Oh, yes. You know, yeah. um, we used to play working men's clubs and do three half an hour spots or two forty fives. Um, and we, we also we had we had like a disco set where we play La Chaumière. Yeah. 
Are you as old as that? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, down the Burgess, which is now this hideous karaoke bar. It was, you know. Um, so we, and we used to 